Okay, so before I start, I'd like to say sorry for the shitty lights, sorry for the shitty audio. This is just going to be a quick, uh, kind of unstructured rant, and I didn't have time to set anything up. So whatever, let's just get going. But before I start talking, uh, you should probably make sure to watch the launch event of OnePlus, and you should probably make sure to watch the uh, special Verge video that they released, uh, I think one day before the phone was released, because I'll be referencing both of them quite a lot. Links are all in the description, check them out, and let me start my rant. So if you've watched both videos, you've heard something along the lines of, oh my God, we're just a small company, we just want to create the perfect smartphone and then sell it cheaper than the competition. And that sounds like a great story, except for at this point, all of those things are just carefully constructed myths that I think are designed to bend the truth a little. Let's get the phone out of the way first. It is basically just flagship Android specifications running pretty much stock Android on what looks to be an iPhone copy. Uh, and all of this is of course sold for a little bit less than the competition. It's fine. I don't think anyone should get away with uh, copying something as thoroughly as this did to the iPhone in 2017. I, I really hope it would be past this point already, but it did and whatever, it's fine. My problem is more with the hype that the company managed to create around this product again. So this hype is carefully manufactured and um, honestly, my regards to OnePlus for doing such an amazing job at it. But I can't believe that you people, the tech enthusiasts and especially the tech media are falling for the same stuff again and again. So OnePlus created a myth with the following components. Uh, them being a small but apparently super agile company, them somehow magically, heroically never settling while everyone else does, them somehow caring more about their consumers while apparently nobody else cares about consumers, and them selling their phones cheaper than the competition. And I would like to deconstruct these myths. And let me start with the first one. Apparently, OnePlus is just a small company. So I remember when they first launched, they had terrible customer service, truly appalling customer service. And their excuse was basically something along the lines of, oh, well, uh, you know, we're a small company. Well, that's just the way it is. When they had terrible marketing campaigns, like when you had to smash your actual phone to maybe get an invitation for their new phone, they were like, oh, well, well we're just small. And now as they launched the OnePlus 5, they anticipated in advance that uh, people would be criticizing the company for not doing anything amazingly new with the phone. So they invited The Verge to China and they got them to make an eight minute video, uh, pretty much just explaining to The Verge and to the viewers of The Verge why they shouldn't expect new features, breakthrough new features, like, I don't know, a bezel-less screen from the device. But OnePlus doesn't have the resources or supply chain management of the bigger players, so might not be able to secure the latest and greatest tech advancements you might get from Apple or Samsung. OnePlus isn't quite a startup, but it is tiny compared to the likes of Samsung or Apple. Because OnePlus is small. Essentially, throughout the history of OnePlus, whenever something went wrong, or whenever something didn't happen that should have happened, well, poor little OnePlus, they're small. Now, if you don't know me or my background, I actually worked for a company called Oppo, which is uh, tied to OnePlus in many, many different ways. Now, Oppo is actually currently the world's fourth largest smartphone maker. Uh, it actually sells more phones than companies like Xiaomi, LG, Sony, or many others that you'd never consider to be a small company. Now, I obviously can't just release insider knowledge here, but let me just remind you of a few publicly available uh, pieces of information that show that those companies, they work together. Let's start with employees. All of OnePlus's founding employees came from Oppo. I actually worked with a couple of them because they were still there when I joined the company. All right. How about OnePlus's office being in the same office building in Shenzhen as Oppo's, just one floor below? Or how about OnePlus's first phone looking nearly identical to Oppo's phone back then? Or how about dash charging? How come that it has the exact same properties as Oppo's very own, very proprietary, patented, secret, super important, super amazing VOOC charging technology? And I'll just stop there. There are a ton of other reasons to think that these companies work together, but when you hear that they actually share product designs and their most important technologies with each other, 
you should know that there is a pretty tight cooperation between the two companies. And so uh, the whole myth of OnePlus being this small independent company is just not true. And even if it was, how long should a company get away with being small and young? Uh, OnePlus is actually releasing its fourth generation of products. Now, to give you some context, Xiaomi, the company who OnePlus modeled its entire business around, when they released the fourth generation of their products, they became the largest smartphone maker in all of China. So did Xiaomi, who, by the way, didn't have Big Daddy Oppo standing over its shoulders, uh, ever use being small or young as an excuse to get away with shit? I can't remember. So the next part of the myth is that OnePlus somehow never settles for good enough, while apparently everyone else just does. There's a lot of companies on the market that can make good products, and if that were the, our goal, we don't need to be around because this need can be fulfilled by many others. But there's not a lot of people who are willing to go the extra mile in going from something uh, good to something great. Because oftentimes it's very painful. You make something, you spend a lot of time debating it, and then you have to redo it over and over again. Never settle is pretty much their slogan, right? I mean, I, I remember it was their founding mantra that they, they founded this company because they wanted to create an Android phone that wouldn't suck because all the other phones sucked. So uh, I imagine that with all this not settling while everyone else was settling, they would have created some uh, amazing new technology that you know none of those settlers could ever touch, right? Uh, quick reality check. 其实一加五上面我觉得倒是那个屏幕真的全面屏这个倒是一个想做但是没资源资源有限还没做到的一个实际上我们是在应该是在去年去年我们其实就想做双摄但是呢那个时候我觉得这个双摄的教育教育成本
every OnePlus flagship is more expensive than the previous one was. And we've come to a point where even at the starting price, the phone is at most maybe $100 or $200 cheaper than even the most expensive devices out there. But the biggest difference is that a Galaxy S8 or an iPhone 7 aren't your only options for a premium device anymore. Depending on where you live, there are a bunch of different alternatives to the OnePlus. Just take a look at Xiaomi. They actually kept their prices low, unlike OnePlus, so now they're a whole lot cheaper than OnePlus. So if anything, OnePlus is currently in the middle. And that is not even considering that premium phone makers actually drop the prices of their flagship phones uh, over time. Well, OnePlus usually keeps it pretty stable. So I can, for example, right now buy the LG G6, which is the company's flagship phone. It's pretty much brand new, it's three months old. I can buy it uh, online, unlocked for 490 euros here in Germany. The OnePlus 5 will cost me 499. So no, the OnePlus 5 just isn't somehow magically affordable anymore. So I think if you add all of those things together, you will realize that OnePlus has created a sort of myth, a reality distortion field. Is the company really so small that we can't hold it accountable for any of its problems? No. Does the company never settle? Hell no, I think it settles all the time. Does the company really care that much about its enthusiast consumers? I think only when it really meets their business needs. Or are OnePlus products really that affordable? I think it all depends on how you count things. I think it is time to realize that OnePlus isn't this magical, small, edgy startup that it wants you to think it is. It is just a smartphone maker that decided to reuse last year's tech innovation and with this generation, even last year's design, and then create a phone that it can sell a little bit cheaper than the competition. And that's it. Is this a fair business model? I guess apart from the copying, it probably is. I mean, the phones are fine. I have no problem with those. But the crazy amount of hype as if this company was reinventing the tech industry, I think it just needs to die. And the really good place to start would be for the media to stop drooling about OnePlus like they do. Like, for example, not going to Shenzhen and then making an eight minute ad that is disguised as a sort of special feature like The Verge did. Come on, Verge, you have journalistic values. You can do better than this. I mean, you could always trust The Verge to point out if something copied the iPhone, but oh wait, now they forgot. Come on, guys, just, just get over it. And you guys, you, the, the, the viewers, the, the people, the tech enthusiasts, just don't give in to the hype. This is just a phone, this is just a phone company, and they just borrowed a little too much from another phone. That's it. This is the story. If you like the phone, go ahead and buy it. Over. My rant is over. Uh, I guess thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribe, like, and bye.